Hey, what's up? So today I'm going to take you through the build for this solenoid engine. Before we get started on the build, let's see how this works. The cylinder here is the solenoid itself. The leads are back here. When a current runs through the solenoid, it becomes an electromagnet, inducing a magnetic field. I'm going to set up the polarity such that this side is positive and this side is negative. If this side is positive, then the electrons in our iron pin are going to be attracted this way, meaning this side will be negative and this side will be positive, becoming a magnet in its own right. This will create an attraction and the pin will be pulled into the solenoid, and that's what's going to run our engine. This leaf controls when the circuit is connected. When the crankshaft is at the top, the circuit is closed and the pin is pulled into the solenoid. When the crankshaft is at the bottom, the momentum of the flywheel keeps it turning until the connection is made again. So to get started, we need something to hold the shape of the solenoid. You could easily use something like a piece of PVC pipe, but I'm using a dead marker that I had lying around. Using a wrench and some needle nose pliers, I took out the spent ink cartridge and then sawed off the nose of the marker. The pin doesn't quite fit, so I'm sanding the nose of the marker to widen the opening. My pin is just a bolt taken from a hinge, but any iron bolt should do. Before long, the pin fits right in place, and we can start winding the solenoid. I place a bead of hot glue to hold the beginning of the coil in place, and start winding a tight coil around the marker. As you can see, to keep the coil from unwinding, I periodically added hot glue along the length of the coil. This will come off later. Now that I've gotten to the end of the marker, I'm adding a layer of tape to hold the coil in place, and am removing the hot glue. Now I'm coiling the wire back up the length of the marker to increase the strength of the magnetic field created by the solenoid. Now that it's all the way wound, I remove the hot glue and add some tape just like before. And after a bit more tape and some cleanup, our solenoid is looking good. Last step is to scratch off the insulation from the leads of the solenoid. Now that that's done, we can get to work on the crankshaft. I'm using a piece of brass since it's a copper alloy and thus retains a relatively high conductivity, but also has some strength to it. After some bending, the crankshaft looks alright from the front but a bit wonky from the side. To try and fix this, I clamp it into the vise and add some force. It's looking better from the side, but now it's all wonky from the front. But after some tweaking with the pliers and the vise clamp, the crankshaft looks pretty good. The axles for the shaft are made out of some brass piping and these eye screws. I've temporarily attached them to some scrap wood with hot glue to test them out, and so far things are looking pretty good. I'm using this piece of steel to connect the pin to the crankshaft. I can thread one end onto the crankshaft like this, and once it's connected to the pin, it should move something like this. To attach the steel to the pin, we're going to have to modify the pin a bit. Here I'm using a hacksaw to saw down the center of the pin, and after a while we have a good slit in the pin. Next I hammer a piece of brass into the pin, and then crimp the edges with the vise. Then I shape and drill to attach onto the steel joint. Next, I attach the pieces with a bolt and nut. And the joint now moves freely. Putting everything together on our makeshift platform, we can see the makings of an engine. And now it's time to get to work on the brush. I'm using a section of brass plating, which I'm folding at one end to fit into the brass tubing. Now I'm trimming the plating and bending it to a 90 degree angle. Then I'm hammering it into the piping so that it stays firmly in place. Side note, while the wood I was testing with was pretty ugly, it was doing the job quite well so I decided to keep it. I cut it to size and gave it a tape skin to make it look a little nicer. 
Now I drill holes into the frame for the crankshaft axles. And then glue and hammer the axles into place. A quick test with the crankshaft shows the axles are doing their job. After drilling and hammering the brush much like the axles, I am now shaping the brush so that it makes contact with the crankshaft when I want it to, without being too resistant. To keep the joint in place, I added two sections of brass piping onto either side of it, which I then glued into place. After removing the excess hot glue, I got to adding washers to either side of the crankshaft to keep it in place, and then glued more of the brass piping to lock in the washers. I decided I didn't like the aesthetic of these copper wires sticking out, so I decided to replace them with this black wire. I opened up the solenoid a bit and cut the wires short. I then stripped the insulation from the copper wire, and wove it into the fibers of the black wire. To finish the connection, I added some solder. After doing the same thing to the other side, the wiring looks cleaner. Our engine is coming along nicely now. I've attached the solenoid to the base, and I laid out the wires loosely where they're going to be. As you can see, I've added a wire to the base of the brush. I attached one end of the solenoid to the base of one of the axles, and added a flywheel. I used an empty spool of wire and hot glued a washer to the front to add weight. I've hooked up the engine to 12 volts DC, but since the voltage generator has a 3 amp output limit, it ended up dropping to 9 volts once the connection was made. But hey, the engine is working! So there you have it, that's the build for the solenoid engine.